But you calm the sea You glorify the Father And spread His name Jesus, there's none
fly like an eagle and pour like rain. You ride on the wind and you know my name. Everything broken, you mend again. No one can love like you. You're gentle as a whisper, but never weak. You're rushing like a breaker, but you calm the sea. You glorify the Father and spread His name, Jesus. There's none like. Jesus, there's none like you. Star of the morning, Redeemer, Lord, our Healer, King, you alone are God. Great hope eternal, the living word you sanctify, changing from within, and you we move and have our being. And you we move and have our being. And you we move and have our being. Spirit of Christ. Source of living water. You cleanse and purify. Your river moves with life flowing from your throne. All creation comes called by the Spirit and the Bride to drink of life given
Well, good morning, Chilliwack Alliance Church. Holly Duke here, missions and engagement pastor. And I'm just here to say welcome and that I'm looking forward to today. I also wanted to introduce Megan McKenzie. She'll be with you online acting as host today. So give her a shout out, say hello, and she would love to hear from you. We'll talk to you soon. And we're here with a final behind the scenes update from the Blessings of Five Corners Christmas. Hello, where is everyone? This year. Oh, shh, wait. What are we listening for? Has anyone seen those girls? Dark hair, always dressed the same like a couple of hooligans. Is that who I think it is? How did she find us? You know, she is right. We do kind of dress the same. Yo, girls, I'm ready for my close up. Uh,
sorry about that. You know how actors get. As we were saying, our team is about ready to embark on over 20 days of filming so that we can bring our community and so many around the world a little dose of joy this holiday season. So, with some new scenes from some of your favorite Five Corners characters, a little dash of music and kindness galore, Christmas is most definitely on the way. Girls? And so is Mildred. We look forward to welcoming you back if you're a Five Corners veteran. Or for the very first time during this crazy COVID Christmas. So, we... We hope you'll join us on the television. Online, Mildred. Online. Online? For a five-week virtuous... Virtual, Mildred! Virtual! Virtual presentation. And they say actors are drama queens. We look forward to seeing you on November the 29th. Wait, 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 wait. I am invited to this, right? Well, um, I've got a few things that I was wanting to draw your attention to, as much as you can pay attention to after you've seen Mildred and those group of crazy people. Um, first off, we just still want to connect with you. We are interested in how you are doing, meeting you maybe for the first time. So find your way to our app, our church app, uh, fill out the connection piece, or you can go to our website. There's a connect to us tab um, on the on the homepage there, and there's a little bit of a form you can fill out, but again, we'd love to hear how you're doing. If there's ways that we can pray, we would love to do that as well. Also, um, our website and our social media platforms are the places where we are constantly updating, so if you're interested in anything that's going on in any ministry in the church, check there first. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Five Corners. Of course it's different this year, um, and we're excited about it, and you've seen bits and pieces um, through the promotional videos, but I wanted to uh, take a few minutes to just explain some of what that looks like for you to kind of hash it out a little bit more. It is so much more um, than, than being in a building, and we're discovering that. Um, generally, our impact has been um, on the people that have come and, and through the conversations that have happened afterwards. And we're thankful and not minimizing any of that. But this year, as of course, as we've had to do some things differently, we've looked beyond. And so there's, it's more than just some of the videos that you've seen. These are actual blessings. So what's gonna happen is that there's five blessings for five weeks, um, the four weeks of Advent, and then the fifth week is um, Christmas Eve. And so we have somehow, established, I don't know all of the details, but we've somehow established people, um, community organizations where there is need, there's a felt need, and um, we're seeking to reach that in blessing those people. So there's going to be some videos um, that, yeah, again, we're going to see those on each of the Sundays of Advent and on Christmas Eve, and just, they're going to include past five Christmas characters. Um, but, and it's not to show just how great we are. Um, what we're trying to do is is extend our reach. So thinking beyond what's in this building, looking at the blessings, the love um, of Christ that he has, because that's what's important and that's what we're trying to get across. Um, it's, not, it's not about us. And so as you see these videos, they're gonna be online as well. We'd love it if you would like you would like them or share them with other people because again we we want to get this message out again it's not about Chilliwack Alliance Church it's about the blessing of Christ his love for us and 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 how great that is and so we're we're just thrilled and so that's part of what you saw in the video but more um, more of these blessings are going to be coming your way so we're excited we're really excited about that um, and finally the Advent season is starting um, this coming Sunday um, November 29th. And so, as usual, we're going to be lighting wreaths, um, our, our candle wreath, and we'd love for you to join us. So if you don't have one, um, go out and get some, get a wreath or get some branches or something. Be crafty, make one, um, get some candles so that you can light with us during this season. Um, and I think, I think that's it. So we'll see you soon. Well, we are excited to worship together, uh, whether we are a part or together, and maybe today we are apart, uh, but we are still together in this city and in this world. And so before we continue on with worship, why don't you bow your heads and let's just pray together. Holy Spirit, we just, 
we just love you and we are so thankful that you are with us and that you are working in us. And God, we just pray that uh, you meet us where we are right now, that you will fill maybe the holes of loneliness that is happening right now with your presence. And we just pray that you are glorified as we sing together and as we worship you. Father, we love you and we pray that you are lifted high in this time. In Jesus' name, amen.
as we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, a name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save.
stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tomb And the angel stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born And the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of old Shall not kneel, shall not fade By His blood and in His name In His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me Wow, thanks, band. We just love worshiping with you, and we thank you, actually, for leading us into a space where we were able to focus well on God. We could get rid of this, the distractions and offer up words that we believe that are true about God and who He is in our lives, and, and what a great time for that. So, band, thank you. And that's just one of the ways that we choose to worship here at Chilliwack Alliance. Another way is just giving space um, forgiving. Um, we want to give back to God an acknowledgement of everything that He's given to us, and so and so we're going to set aside time to do that now. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can give online, or if you want to, you can come on by. We're open from Monday to Friday, 9 till 3, and we'd actually just would love to see your faces, so come on by. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm not in the foyer anymore. I'm in the all-purpose room, formerly known as the gym, with Teresa. Um, this has been transformed into the Area Collection Center, so Chilliwack and Area Collection Center for the Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. And we're really excited because today is Dedication Sunday, and they're going to be shipped off tomorrow. Um, I think they're headed to Calgary, and then they'll go points unknown um, from there. And and that's just really excited. So make sure that you get your shoot boxes in today, Sunday, before 2 o'clock this afternoon, because otherwise we're, we're going to be shut down and, and you'll have to wait till next year. But these shoe boxes are, they're not just a shoe box, they're not just filled with toys, but they are actually used um, in conjunction with local churches in communities that are so impoverished. Um, and what goes along with these is some discipleship material. Our friends in Peru actually have been working in villages who have received shoe boxes. And so they, along with the local church, are discipling these kids, they're discipling families, and whole communities are being transformed. So yes, it is a shoe box of gifts for kids, but communities are impacted. And so this is just a small way that we can be involved in God's kingdom building in this world. So we're going to dedicate these. Teresa's going to pray over them. Um, but we're really excited for what God um, can do through these shoe boxes. Teresa? Thank you, Holly. Mm -hmm. um, as the boxes have come in from different uh, people around the community, I have uh, had the privilege of praying with the boxes as they came in with those people as well. And it's just been a joy. So uh, as we uh, uh, pray now, um, Holly, do you want to help me just with the praying? I uh, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for these boxes. I thank you that our community is so willing to um, uh, move forward even in the challenging times so that they can uh, uh, just bring a, a little bit of joy to children around the world. Lord, as these boxes leave this premises on Monday, that you will just protect them. Protect each box as they go to Calgary, and then on to uh, the, 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 the designated countries, Lord. I know that you have specifically designed each box here for a special person, 
a special little person. And I just pray as they receive those boxes that their heart is open to also hear about you. And as we have this wonderful um, greatest journey now as follow-up, that they will get to know you in a very special way. And thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity to, in a very small way, to share your, your gospel. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. So seeing all those shoe boxes, it just, it delights me. And it reminds me that nothing is going to stop the spread of the kingdom of God. Nothing is going to stop the spread of the gospel. Not communist China, not COVID, not persecution, famine, sword. Nothing is going to get in the way of the, of the Lord spreading his love to the world both near and far. Now one of the things that I'm sure they are well aware of is that just this past Thursday, Dr. Bonnie Henry announced a number of new uh, restrictions being put in place over us as British Columbians in hopes of slowing the spread of COVID-19. Now what that means for us here at the church is that all of our weekend worship services will be online only until, well, until at least December the 6th. That will be an online service as well, and then we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Also, all of our midweek services are going to be on hold for like a live version of the midweek services, but we're going to do what we can to see about getting them to, to go online so that you can meet with the people also online. I'm going to do this again. I got lost in the middle, and I can do that again. So all of those cartons... Remind me, friends, that nothing is going to stop the spread of the gospel. Nothing is going to stop the advance of the kingdom of God. Not communist China, not COVID, not famine, persecution, sword, nothing. Now, as many of you know, this past Thursday, Dr. Bonnie Henry imposed a whole bunch of new restrictions on us as British Columbians uh, in hopes of slowing the spread of COVID-19. Now, what that means for us here at our church is that weekend services will be online only until at least December the 6th. It also means that all midweek ministries are on hold, but our office is going to be open for you if you want to come to worship uh, through, your, through your giving or what have you, or to come to ask a question about our ministries uh, during that time. Now, as I've been thinking about this, I thought, rather than viewing this as a downer, rather than viewing this as a step back, I think that we can view this as an opportunity, because if the Lord isn't done with COVID yet, then there's something that we as a church need to learn about ministering here in this growingly virtual online world. And so rather than shrinking back, let's dive in. For instance, it is easier than ever to invite someone to come to our church. If you're watching this on Facebook, all you have to do is click share on your feed, and then everyone else that you know, they, you can basically virtually invite them to come to our church. Also, just this past week, my small group, we met completely virtually. And friends... It was a beautiful time together. What I've come to see with this is that there is a huge opportunity through the virtual means. What I've come to see through this is that virtually gathering together in small groups can work and it can work really. If we had a beautiful time of prayer, a wonderful study. It was meaningful, meaningful. And the other thing that I've come to see in this is that our Five Corners Christmas outreach this year, it can meet it can reach more people this year than it ever has in the past. We've had upwards of 4,000 people come to our facility in years gone by. This year, we can easily double, if not triple that, uh, the way that we're doing it online this year. Friends, rather than shrinking back, rather than viewing this as a loss, let's view this as an opportunity. Let's keep in step with the Holy Spirit, doing what he's calling us to do, inviting people sharing things, spreading our faith, spreading hope and joy that we have in Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day. And it's going to be a wonderful time for us to hear more about God, more about his word through Pastor Leon. So Pastor Leon, would you please join us? Thank you, Matt. Okay. So here we go again. Uh, round two uh, should be interesting. I think... It can be safely said that we are living in a very weird world these days. <laughs> I mean, things have been weird for a while in the world. They've been building up. And now the cherry on top of the whole stinking heap is COVID. We are living in our days in a polarized world. I mean, you think about uh, Europe. Uh, with Greece that's broke but still wants to spend money, and then you have England that wants to leave and kind of doesn't want to leave. <laughs> we've, we've just come through the American election, 
And we follow that, and some of the states, the, the votes were within like 1% of each other. They're polarized down there. Uh, we're in a polarized world. We're living in an angry world right now. Uh, do you remember the Me Too movement? That seems like ancient history. But all of a sudden in our sex crazed culture where everything goes, now all of a sudden we had some new level of righteous expectations. <laughs> and people are angry about it. People who feel left out, most recently Black Lives Matter, feel that they can go on destructive rampages and uh, even destroy some of the businesses that their own people own. We have seen how irresponsible social media has been as people can hide behind their screens and vomit out all kinds of bile. And Twitter being a notable culprit of that. <laughs> it's interesting as I think about our angry world, I read, I read this very interesting comment in no less an authoritative source than Car and Driver magazine. This is what Jared Gall said. Now that vitriol or bitter speaking is the official language of our national discourse, skepticism doesn't just come easy, it's ever-present background noise. The tinnitus of an angry and distrustful world. Oh, we live in a polarized world. We live in an angry world. We live in a fearful world. As it is clear that authorities are losing control of this virus. And we are under increasing pressure for us to be alone. And actually, they're not even recommending we do that. <laughs> Increasingly, as this thing drags on, people feel loneliness, emptiness, despair. <laughs> can, can, can you just imagine for a minute what it's like for us to keep a church going during these kinds of days? These are fearful days that our world is in. And we live in secular days. There's no mention of God by the leaders of the world. Uh, we are publicly humanistic. We alone determine our fate. We determine our identity, our gender. We are the supreme being. God is not. <laughs> it's, a weird, it's a weird time in the world. We are swimming in a cesspool trying to keep our head above it all. And we say, God, where are you in all of this thing? Where is there hope for a brighter day that is simply not just happy, clappy platitudes? Well, I want to talk to you about that, this for a few minutes today. And I hope that you will be wide awake. Pastor Matt has been talking to us the last few weeks about two of the three things that he has found that help Christians to grow in Christ. And they're all, three of them are E's. We grow in Christ when we are encircled by quality Christians. We grow in Christ when we are engaged in Christian ministry. And the third one that I want to talk to you about today we grow in Christ when we have an encounter with God. Encircle, engage, encounter. And increasingly, in our weird world, I wonder if this is where we are at as Christian people. So, the North American church has been bumping along for some time. And as time has gone by, and I just see, you know, I just see we get... We get mile wide and inch deep, and I've just sort of seen the, the capital C church in North America going down, and I have wondered over the last few years if that decline is inevitable. But now, as we're in this weird time, which is heightened by the restrictions placed upon us, I wonder if events are pointing to a new encounter with the Lord. I wonder. Think about it. Think about it today, and then I'm going to speak on this next week as well. So put your thinking cap on and take your Bible out and go to chapter 20 of the book of John. All right? The Gospel of John, chapter 20. We're going to look at a, uh, at a passage today that I think, I think uh, really um, speaks to where we are at through a 
fine character in the New Testament. So let's talk about, let's talk about dashed hopes for a minute. So I want to read uh, just part of Dr. Seuss's book called Oh, the Places You'll Go. And uh, this is just a little piece that uh, uh, comes from that book. Dr. Seuss says, Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't. Because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up on a prickly perch and your gang will fly on and you'll be left in the lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump. And the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. We focus today on one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. Thomas. Thomas. Like the other disciples, he had left everything to follow Jesus. And as he followed Jesus, he saw Jesus work the miracles. It was phenomenal. And he listened to the sublime teaching of the Master. He secretly, like the other disciples, hoped that Jesus would set up an earthly kingdom and that they would punt the pagan Roman usurpers out of the country. But as Jesus' ministry went on, Thomas also saw opposition increase against him. For, and we see this when, remember when Jesus went out to the home of Lazarus who had died and Jesus said, it's now time to go to Lazarus' house. And Thomas said to Jesus and to the other disciples, well, we're all gonna go with you and we're gonna die with you there. Already, Thomas was realizing that he was on a losing team. And then came the betrayal of Judas. And then, with horror, the trial and the suffering of Jesus. And then his horrible death and his burial. Thomas's whole world crumbled away. He was left alone and empty. And then, the word came from the other disciples. We have seen the risen Lord. <gasps> and they were excited. But Thomas had not been there when they saw the risen Lord. And some people may be happy with some kind of a spiritual mirage, uh, but not Thomas. For he had put up walls to protect his grieving soul. And when they talked about the risen Lord, this is what he said. Are you in the passage now? John 20, verse 24. Now Thomas, called Didymus, or twin, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. And when the other disciples told him that they had seen the Lord, he declared this. Listen, these are hard words. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. You know his nickname. He's commonly called Doubting Thomas. It's not a very nice nickname to have. But as I think about it, aren't we all like that a little bit sometimes? Aren't some of us like Thomas in doubting even during this crazy time in our world? We, as Christians, we just... We continue to slog along in the faith, but, but we have a sense of dullness, loss, grief. We feel like during this time when we're shut up in our house and we feel like opportunities, opportunities are passing us by and the, and the spiritual vitality that we felt in the past 
Maybe those exciting times or those times when we wept during worship, they seem like a long time ago. <laughs> and we just kind of find ourselves wondering, God, are you there? Do you know what I'm going through? Well, that's how Thomas felt. And so, from that incident, a week went by. And in our story, uh, as we continue on it, Thomas is with his brother disciples again. As an aside, I think, here's Thomas, who's, who's doubting, but he's still found with the other disciples. He still hangs out with them. I say, good for you, Thomas. So he had dashed hopes. Let's take a minute and talk about a fresh encounter because we're coming to a great spot. Think about this. Does Thomas really want to put his finger in a hole made by a nail? Does Thomas really want to slide his hand into the gash only recently made by a Roman spear? Like, that sounds pretty icky to me. <laughs> this is an aching and despondent heart that is speaking here. And so, let's look at what happened. <clears throat> Verse 26, are you there? A week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. So Jesus comes into the room. The door is being shut. And he wastes no time. He goes directly over to Thomas. How do you think Thomas felt among his, among his brothers there? I bet you he wanted to fall right through the floor. <laughs> but Jesus subjected himself to Thomas's scrutiny. The risen one. He invites him to inspect the holes suffered to provide salvation for Thomas. Don't you just love Jesus? Thomas's cry had been through, through his sorrow and his doubting and his feelings of lostness. His cry had been, Jesus, are you who you say you are? Are your promises that I believed, are, are they all true? Can I trust you? <laughs> do, you think, do you think in that moment that Thomas went over uh, and put his finger in the hole in Jesus' hand? Not on your life. He didn't touch any of the marks of crucifixion for Thomas now had his answer to all those questions. Yes, Jesus was who he claimed to be and that was good enough for Thomas. In a moment, his sorrow was overcome for he had an encounter with the risen Lord. Now, talking to Christians now, Everybody who's a thinking person is going to have some doubts along the Christian journey. We all come into circumstances at various times in our life and these circumstances will shout to us, oh, God doesn't care for you. God isn't here in this situation. You're on your own. The early trusting faith you had was simply naive. <laughs> the, pr the pressures and the sorrows of life put our past Christian passion in the background as time goes along, we get too many bumps in the road, too many soul-sucking faith stealers that leave us dry. And it's hard to remember the crossing of the Red Sea when you're dying of thirst in the desert. It is then that we need a fresh encounter with him. And it is significant to me 
that Jesus didn't go on a tirade with regard to Thomas's doubt, but instead he met with him afresh. Do you think that the Lord knows about your situation and your feelings right now? Perhaps it is time for a fresh encounter with him. And notice that Thomas, in response to the beautiful overture of Jesus, he just sinks to his knees and he declares Jesus to be Lord and God and most significantly he says, you are my Lord and my God. He had a fresh encounter, friends. Just one more thought for you today. This thought is, I'm here to meet with you. Verse 29. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And John says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Jesus spoke about you and me in this passage. For you and I are the ones who have not seen him and yet believe. And Jesus admits that it is more complex for us who do not see the physical risen Lord and do not have an opportunity to see the scars in his hands and feet. But he also says that people like us are specially blessed as we believe. So our normal Christian life Our day-to-day Christian life is sustained by our time in the Word and we read it and we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us through it. Our normal Christian life is sustained by regular times of prayer, worship, times together with God's people. Of course, now it's only on Zoom, but you know what I'm saying. And through the spiritual disciplines, things that we, we say yes to and things we say no to, these comprise our normal, everyday Christian life. But this does not mean that we don't need times of renewed love and joy and passion for Christ. We do not live an emotionless Christian experience. So when we have doubts and struggles, which will come, We continue in the faith, but we also ask to meet afresh with the master. Jeremiah promised in chapter 29, you will, and God spoke through Jeremiah, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So as I've mentioned to you and as Pastor Matt has been speaking to you about encircle, be encircled with quality Christian people, be engaged in Christian ministry and you will grow as a Christian. And the third one is an encounter with God in some profound way. So in my new role, I am trying to set the table for us as a church who are hungry and thirsty for a fresh experience of his presence. Is this you? Are you parched? Are you needy? Perhaps it's time for an encounter. However, 
You must also be willing to recognize him as your Lord and your God. He's not your servant. You are his. So, (laughs) I've, I've put together a page on our website. So you go to Chilliwack Alliance Church. Up it comes, and you'll see ministries there. You click on ministries, okay? And you scroll down, and you'll see the word encounter. That's my little feeble page that I've put together. I put a couple of things on there. I hope you will go on there because, because there was a link there and this is my homework for you this week. So my son Chris, who is pastor in our Kamloops church, is taking his congregation this fall through, uh, 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 through the need for a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit, which I want to do as well. And uh, there's some very awesome podcasts on there. And if I may say, His podcast with me is really quite neat, and it's on this concept, and I'm gonna talk more about it next Sunday. So your homework, you can remember this, or write it down if you want. Chilliwack Alliance Church, go on ministries, down to encounter, and then click on that podcast and be prepared for our time next Sunday. I'm gonna give you a challenge next Sunday. So as I close today, How Thomas needed a fresh encounter with the risen Lord. And when he encountered him, his doubts were stilled. This encounter was what he needed. And it carried him through his life. Until tradition says that he died a martyr's death in India. About 49 AD. For he knew without a doubt that Jesus was his Lord and his God. Perhaps today you are dry and thirsty. Maybe you feel like Thomas today. You know, the great preacher John Wesley said this, draw a circle on the floor, get inside the circle and pray, Lord, revive everything inside this circle. We're coming into December. We remember about the birth of Jesus. And Paul tells us that at just the right time, Jesus was born. The voice of the, of the living word came to us at just the right time. God knows the right time for you and the right time for me. And at Christmas time, he encountered a sin-sick world of which we were a part through a little baby born in obscurity, that believing in him, we might have life in his name. I'm here to meet with you. Come. And meet with me. I'm here to find you. Reveal yourself to me. As I wait, you make me strong. As I long, hold me to your arms. As I stand and sing your praise, won't you come? Won't you come and fill this place? Please come. Please come and fill this place. You know, we're in a very weird world right now. What is the response of a Christian? I want to say to you that it is not about what's outside that counts. But in times like this, it's what's inside that counts. Without need, we will never have a fresh encounter. Do you have need? Then make it a matter of prayer. This week, open your heart to him. Invite him to come afresh and to speak to the depths of your soul. And you may have the encounter that you need. 
I'd like to pray for you. As we close our time, and as we do business with the King of Kings. Lord Jesus, we have not seen you yet, we believe. For we have seen the results in our life of the salvation that the holes in your hands and feet and side purchased for us. Oh Lord, in these awful times, we just need you to restore to us the joy of our salvation. And so as we expose ourselves to your Spirit's searchlight, as we affirm afresh our desire to follow you, the Master, that you might be Lord and God, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would enthrone Jesus afresh in each willing heart who watches today. Lord, we need to encircle ourselves with quality Christians. We need to engage in Christian ministry, but oh, how we need a fresh encounter with you. And we ask for that in the name of the risen Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen.